Well, my demo tonight is really about indexing, and I, uh, how, how many of you do indexing? Know about indexing? Well, I, I have a one-way lathe, which is a big, big lathe, and, uh, and in the, on the side, there's, there's a knob there that I can index, but I can't see it. I mean, I can't, even when I look in there, there's no numbers. So I think I can turn it and stick a pin in and turn it and stick a pin in and, and I might be able to make it move 24 times. 48. On, an, on a one way? It's 48? Okay, we're good. And they do, they, they do have indexing on, uh, on some of these, uh, these chucks, if you look on the back. But the problem for me is, is, as a wood turner, I think out of sight, out of mind. I just, I gotta have it more visual. So that's what I really wanna show you tonight is what indexing is, uh, what I do uh, with indexing. And I took a class, I took a half a day class at the Tennessee Symposium a year ago, January. And I, I watched uh, this guy, uh, Harvey Meyer. And this is, uh, this is in the AAW magazine. Um, I guess it's October 2016. And Harvey Meyer was demonstrating this type of work, uh, Baskets of Illusion, which in this article he talks about, you know, David Nittman, who's, who passed away, but the, the, the guy that originated it, Lincoln Seitzman, I guess. So in, anyway, in his presentation, he was showing how to index and, and how to make the beads and how to color. And, and so I guess I'll do a crash course on, on a little bit of each so you get an idea of what this is all about. Um, but it's a great article. I mean, everything you want to know is, uh, is in the book. And I mean, he's got some really cool stuff. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> Indexing is just a way of, of moving something, a space, drawing a line, moving it another space. Uh, in that particular piece over there, the sunflower, that's 144 uh, spaces. So I typically will index a 48, 60, 72, 96, and 144. They have to all typically be in groups of 12. And, uh, and so uh, you can get this software program for free. He talks about it in the book, Black Cat Systems. Uh, you go on the internet and, and uh, type in their polar graph. And uh, their, pol their polar graph is, uh, is like this. And so, uh, this particular graph is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight times 12, that's what, how, that's what that, uh, that particular one is. This is a, a smaller one, it's only 48 uh, index. So what I end up doing then is I, I end up making my, my indexing plates and, and I had to make a special one for your lathe here, but uh, we'll be using this to uh, index this piece. Actually, I think what I brought tonight was a bowl that I had turned previously and beaded on both sides. So we'll probably index this one for you and uh, show you what, how I get set up in, in, in then burning it and then coloring it to make it look like a basket. The key to Making the beads is this particular tool here. I guess I should. And uh, this is a uh, tool that you can buy. It's called D-Way Tools. I have, happen to have two of them. Um, the difference is one is an eighth of an inch bead, and the, uh, this is an eighth of an inch, and this one is a 3 16th inch bead. Um, for tonight, I thought I would, I guess what I did is I, I dropped a 3 16th inch bead here for my rim, and then I'm just gonna bead 1 8 inch beads the rest of the way through here, just to show you how easy it is to do a bead. Uh, I've even made my own beading tools, uh, 
My largest one that I can beat is 3 16 So I've got uh, a big bowl that I'm doing, 14 and a half inches in diameter, and I've beaded both the inside and the outside. And I'm working on coloring it so that it ends up looking, you know, something like this. The key is you gotta, you know, you gotta duplicate both sides. And that's, that's what makes it look like a basket of illusion. I have no idea what the optimum speed is. Um, my one way, I, I don't even have a digital. I just turn it on and, and, uh, and give it a go. The key, the key is, is, is presenting this tool so that it is right at the line of center at about like that, okay? So we'll, we'll do a couple beads here and you can kind of see what I, how it works. I got a little bit of a wobble here. There again, I, I have a, a different kind of chuck and I just, this will work. I'm left-handed, so I typically hold, hold it with my left hand and I think the key is, is it, I think it's better to leave these things unhandled and the reason is, is when I'm doing bowls on the inside of bowls, I can't, I can't have a handle hitting on the inside of a bowl. So, you know, I've got to be able to probably do bowls that are that big so that I can get this in the, uh, the inside of the bowl. Now, when I, when I present this to the wood, I just kind of move it a little bit back and forth. And what I'm looking for is the bottom I'm looking right at the bottom here so that when it fills up with wood, I know that I have a true bead. And if it's not, then I'm gonna have a flat spot. And I've got a little bit of a flat spot there, so you gotta, you gotta be real critical on getting a true bead all the way around. So we'll go back and I think I got that one. Now the other thing that you want to do when you when you start beading, and 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 there again, I'm doing beads here. On this particular one, all I did was I dropped I dropped my tool in here and I just touched it. You know, I didn't want to bead. I just wanted I wanted a way of of making lines so that it just kind of did a checkerboard. It's just kind of like a measuring device then? It's a measuring device, exactly. In fact, what we'll do is we'll, we'll do some, some different beads here just, just for, for kicks. But what, I, but what you have to do is I've got this line here already as a starting point. If I, if I start to do this next bead, then I've, my starting point line has disappeared. So every time that I start doing beads, I've got to have an extra one here ready to fall into. Otherwise, I lose my frame of reference. So I can, I can kind of do this. So I've got three beads ready to go here. I just want to keep ahead of the, of the process. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, Let's just do a, a bigger bead, just to, okay, so here we go. I'm just, I just kind of wiggle it a little bit back and forth.
I can already tell I've got some flat spots here, so I gotta I gotta gotta keep going a little bit deeper. If you don't get a true bead, then when you go to wood burn, it's more difficult to to wood burn the bead. Because what you end up doing, and, and what luckily when I, when I went to the Tennessee Symposium, this Harvey uh, Meyer, Meyer sold me these, and then he sold me two wood burning tools that are this same shape. I think they're made by Optitech. And so I can go in and touch that bead one time, and it burns that entire bead there's a flat spot, it's not going to get that flat spot. And then you got to go back and with a straight, straight one and try and burn it so that it looks entirely burned. So that's why it's kind of critical to make sure that you get nice true beads. Okay, so now we're, we're going to go to a couple big, bigger beads here just, just for, for fun. So I'm going to start, start another bead there. Okay. Can, can you see okay what I'm doing? Since you do have a digital readout, can you tell us how fast you're turning? You, you bet. Okay, so now, here you can really see there's a flat spot there. I've got a little, little bit of a flat one there too, so I'll go back and touch that one up. Um, right here it says I'm... 1575. I can turn it up a little bit. We'll just. So let me see. I wanted to go back. This this one had a flat spot in it. I think this one did too. Now what I do. When I sharpen these, I just go to my, my, my grinding wheel and just touch it up. You can, you can hone them, but you know, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of tool here. So you know, just do a light hit with the wheel, you're not taking off much metal at all. But that's the only area that you're gonna grind it, is just that, that, that part right there. It's gonna keep these tips real sharp. Okay, we'll come back over here and do one more. Okay. I think I got a flat spot. So let me get, get those two real quick. It's not. What I need to be at is right at the center line where I'm making my cut. <clears throat> Should be like right there, I guess. Yeah, that looks that looks that looks really good. 
What, what's that, Mike? Does one word work better than others for this? Well, okay. The very first one that I did, I did the eighth inch bead. And, and it's very hard. It, 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 it's, it's very difficult because the difficult part of this is then going in and doing the actual coloring, okay? okay. And if, th this probably is not a good example, but if, if I wanna just color that one bead brown and then leave the next one white, you're using these India ink pens One's a brush pen and then one's an S, real fine tip, with a magnifying glass. And you're going in there and you're, I mean, it's Doesn't detailed, it's way. detailed work. You don't want to be drinking a lot of coffee because you, you don't want the jitters, okay? <laughs> I mean, it's, it, serious, that, I, I do that between like 5.30 and 8.30 in the morning and then I go off and do something else because I can't do it very long. And, and it's, but the fun thing about it is, is you can do this anyway. I actually took this with me on, a, on an airplane and uh, I was sitting against the window on a three and a half hour flight to Portland and I was coloring this in. And, and, and so you can kind of take it with you and, and do it. Um, I think what I want to do now is get into the indexing part. This just get, give you a good idea of what the the beading process is, and um, I think these tools, if I remember right, I think they were like around $42 a piece. And so if you have to have them, D-Way Tool is, is who you would uh, order them from. And uh, they should last a long time. So you're putting the left side in the groove of the previous bead, right? Well, yes, what I'm, what I'm doing now on this next one, you're right, I'm, I'm, this is my lead because I haven't done it yet, and so, and then I'm slightly, okay. we'll just do it again. I'm just slightly, oh, and the other thing I want to do here is, is I want to keep my tool rest so that I'm perpendicular to the, and all I'm doing is I'm just doing a slight wiggle so that I'm kind of doing a sheer cut scrape on both sides. And I'm looking down at the very bottom of that. Right now I see air. I don't see wood. And when, it, and when I see wood, hopefully, I've got a complete bead. <laughs> You're right. So anyway, that's, that's, uh, that's beading. I know. I noticed you, uh, that's a solid piece of wood. Yes. You're doing that side. You do the whole side and then turn it around. Okay. So what? So what I normally do, and if you want to, if you want to do this, uh, it's probably good to go in and buy a hard piece of maple, uh, maybe five fourths uh, or six fourths, inch and a half thick. Uh, this one might be, say, a two inch piece, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, but I, but I always typically start, I just did this for, for right. demo, but, but basically I might, I just might have my spur center here and my tail stock here. And I typically shape, shape my bowl down to this part because I need, I need my, uh, tenon. dovetail tenon and and I'll get these all done, and now, now I'm gonna flip it around this way, and I'm gonna go in, and you want it about a quarter inch thick. That's when you hollow, you finish hollowing it out. Right, but, the, but in, in order to do that, you have to do it in stages. Because if I went ahead and did this whole bowl first, I'm gonna get a wobble. Most of the time, you get a wobble. So what you have to do is, as you're taking wood away from the inside, just take about that much, leave your mass here, and then do these beads. Mm -hmm. And then work it in again, and do some more beads, until you get down to this part here, and then you still, you've got enough mass, and you're right behind the, the chuck, you're not gonna get the wobble. Once that wobbles, you're toast, as far as beading goes. 
doesn't matter with the indexing. And I meant to bring in, believe it or not, I'm trying to do a, a, a green piece of sweet gum. And I thought it'd look cool because uh, I, I beaded the whole outside and I left the inside just plain. And then I let it dry and it warped on me. And, and I think it looks, uh, it looks more natural. It looks like a native Indian basket. You know, baskets are made out of reed type material, right? So they're, they're not perfectly round. And, and if you look at the ones in museums, uh, this piece of green sweet gum moved on me and I think it's gonna be cool if, if it turns out, we'll see. Um, but what I had to do is, is with it being warped and everything, I, I basically then end up turning this down uh, using my vacuum chuck and everybody's got one of those right <laughs> we all have the right all the right tools okay so now let's go to uh, uh, indexing 